welcome guys to yep. episode 21 of the trainer feed uh before we get into everything and before we ask everybody how everybody's doing make sure to like comment subscribe that's on youtube that's on ig that's on we're not on facebook no nah. we're not on facebook. we're not on facebook yet not yet not yet but make sure to do all of that and then shout out to chip cup for that shout coffee. Out to them. and uh yeah let's get into it so how's everybody doing David, my new Yo, shout out to my bro, yo. <laughs> no, we traded. He liked mine better. So I'm like, why not? I don't care. Um, you mean the ones that Angel got us for the podcast or another pair? I didn't get headphones. No, we didn't I get had some already. You only you oh, did. Okay. Only you got the headphones. Gotcha. Because um, we're gamers. Yes, sir. Gamers. All right. um, I, I should not do that. Um. Yo, I'm sore from that fucking driving range, from the the. the yeah, golf. man, my, my ha- hands, my hands are and forearms. So fire! It's crazy. It was fun. I'm going again on Wednesday with my brother. If you yeah. guys want to come, yeah. I told Alex I want to go again because she was like, "Oh, I don't know that kind of thing." I was like, "Yeah, but it's like, you, I don't like, I don't really necessarily like golf either, but like the repetitive like exercise of it." Yeah, do that again. Quite... Do that again. The the. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never done it before. It was really fun. So if you hey, if you want, if you guys want to go, I'm going Wednesday. Wednesday okay, afternoon. I'll, so I'll let I'll me know. know I need to whether it's this Wednesday. I also like rip the the all my like my skin off my thumbs. God damn! From wow. hold, holding the club too hard, and like yesterday morning, I had a couple of clients, and I told them, oh, I want to because they love golf, and I was like, oh, I want to go the range, and like, oh, how was that? I was like, good, but look at my thumbs, and like, ah, oh, you need to wear a glove. That was like, the first thing they said. But your skin calluses Fuck anyway, no. so I I mean, like, if I go back within like a week, it should be like good. So I mean, unless I didn't hold the clubs tight enough, I was fine. My thumbs were. I mean, my this one here was kind of like fucked up, but that's that was already messed up anyway. You wouldn't think it, right? Playing golf. I mean, it was fun. I was drenched. Yeah, man. Angel, my shorts, that my like... shorts were fucking yo. It was like wa- it was like I was just doused with water. <laughs> yeah, yeah I was the same thing. We just like just it was eight PM was still hot. No, Seven PM was still hot on Wednesday, so it was it was pretty humid, but it was a lot of fun. It's good. Sorry, I had a fucking screen. Anyway, Angel, David, how how are we feeling? Good. Took a nice walk. Saw a lot of nice scenery. Um, yeah, it was great. I don't know uh, why you're yeah. laughing. Because <laughs> I, I, I don't know if you're being specific on scenery. So I was just like, no, like, nah, man, it was, it was nice. It was a nice day outside. No, nah, it's been beautiful outside. Especially, like, I think that the city needed some rain. I think. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, finally. Yeah, because it was super hot. Um, and it was humid as well. But it was good to uh, kind of go out there in the rain and all that stuff. I was actually, on Wednesday, I got caught in the rain. Because I went to work out with Nunu. Um, oh right for a birthday right out the workout yeah right before i don't know um but it was like it was it was cool to kind of like be out there work out be outdoors the insects were crazy um by the water right Mm -hmm. yeah because like i guess they were trying to run from the water and they got a little bit wild uh what about you Jacques? how are you doing i'm good anyone who's watching will probably see that i'm not in my apartment and like he got kicked out uh, alex had it now she's working. Long story short, my folks unfortunately lost power last week in Connecticut, which is like really rough, like for like yeah. four or five days. Uh, if I told you guys that, so it was rough. And like, basically, uh, I'm on their on their mobile plan, on the cell phone plan. And like Tuesday, I had no Wi-Fi the whole day. And by like, I was like streaming, I was like hotspotting off my phone. And I was like, damn, this should just stop working at like five thirty. Just watching hockey on my on my iPad and whatever. And then like. Then I watched for the whole day, and then my phone wasn't working. Like, I was like, what's going on? I couldn't watch hockey or whatever. And I called the next day. It turns out that I didn't guess that in the five days they had no power. They pretty much used up. I mean, like, they had the power. I get it. Most of the data for the month. So now when I'm outside, when there's no Wi-Fi, when I'm outside a Wi-Fi network, I can't load the city bike app. It doesn't tell me where there are bikes. My email doesn't work. Spotify barely works i can text and call and that's it so i feel like i'm abroad you know when you go abroad and you have like no data service so and that's why i'm outside because the wi-fi was like like 
I literally had a call this morning for an hour and it's fine. As soon, I'm glad it like stopped after we, we jumped off the call. But so that's where I'm at right now. It's problems with the Wi-Fi and problems with my data. So I got to I gotta change my plan or whatever because this is just fucking stupid. To feel like you're abroad when you pay, like, and look, like it's, I didn't lose power. I could have been a lot worse off. So they had, they had no power for five days. So we'd have to go to Home Depot for some Wi-Fi. So um, things aren't too bad on my end, but. I just gotta make sure that's not those open heat. It's kind of getting a little warm. But besides that, we're good, man. Cool. All right. Um, sorry to hear about the power. The power's been a little bit crazy and it's some just places. annoying. Yeah. yeah. We're just adding the 2020. It's fine. Yeah, for real. Uh, but let's talk about what we want to discuss today. So, our topic of discussion was going to be fitness trends. Um, and the benefits from them, if there are any, and the bad parts from them. So, which are many? <laughs> I guess it depends on the. What do you guys want? Them. Yeah, what do you guys? I I like. I want to kind of talk like cover CrossFit, hot yoga, uh, and even like fitness apps um, that are pretty obviously yeah popular right now, given everything quarantine, but. That's kind of what I, want I think one of the biggest on. ones is online fitness programs, I think, in general. You know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but at the end of the day, no one's able to, you know, be there to watch you do something and do it correctly. That's that's mm. one of the points I want to bring up is that, like, and look, like, I've, I've been using, uh, like, the Peloton app, for example, and I think it's awesome. But Which if, app? like you said, the Peloton, Peloton okay. yeah. Which I did a trial, and I was like, ah, I think, and then I've, like, it's been awesome. It's really good for like, you know, no equipment or something to just, again, I like think trainers, you kind of want something to take your mind away from you design the program all the time. So it's good to have that. And, um, but like you said, if you, if you don't have that person like that's physically there to kind of cue you through an exercise with like, Hey, do the squats either look like this for me, kind of look different for you or like, Oh, you're, you're doing the deadlift kind of like almost there, but like, just tweet this for me. Like no one from the screen can come and tell you to do that. Right. And then the other thing from the app perspective, I want to mention is that if you have an injury, there's no one on the app that can say, Hey, here's the best regression or here's the next progression for you, you know? Mm. So that's also like a hard, a harder factor with that also, you know, they can't like us, if we're using an app, we're fine. We can go like, all right, you know, like, and prime example is like, if one of you guys had an injury and we're doing the exercises, if like one of them was like jumping and he's kind of feeling funky, all right, I'm not jumping. I'm probably going to do like a reverse lunge as a progression or regression even, sorry. So like being trainers or being in the fitness industry, sometimes you have that upper hand. But again, we're talking about all these kinds of um, like, trends right now and not everyone is a professional who are who is taking part right and um that's that's some of some of the challenges with you know fitness apps unfortunately yeah i mean also it, it does come with the territory right i mean you can never Absolutely. you know you, you can never train everyone right like in, in person which which kind of sucks but at the end of the day i think it comes down to the person really wanting to make an investment in training and you know i'm not anybody's accountant but i think you know it is expensive it's not it's not cheap to have somebody have a zoom call or a facetime or skype once a week even you know it's mm. especially for people that don't that aren't working because of what's going on mm. now but i think the biggest thing though in terms of learning how to do something or having an idea of how to do it is just to you know look up resources online and read you know and there, there right. are a lot of great resources that you could read and I think learn about the movement in general rather than learning about the movement. <laughs> rather Shout than, out. <laughs> yeah, what up? Yeah. Shout out to the um, is, that my, is that my lunch? Um, um, crap, I lost my train of thought. Um, thanks, Jacques. You fucking no, you sorry, just, man. Don't blame me. Yeah, that was the dude he just pulled up right behind Jacques. Who's about to give him the assassin? Shake him. <laughs> yeah. Trying to get that free fitness class since yeah, so uh, David, you were talking a little bit about like how some of these online fitness programs uh, kind of fill the void uh, for people who can't afford necessarily oh, yeah. afford personal training. And then, yeah. um, well, basically, just educating yourself on certain movements, you yeah. know, rather than 
just being like, Hey, do this, do this, do that. And sort of being like, this is how your body should go. I think it'll be, it'll help everybody and, and it'll be beneficial for your own. I think just physical uh, idea of how, how your body moves. If you just, you know, mm. read about it, read about moving mechanics, you know, it, it doesn't have to be the most specific, the most advanced thing, you know, mm-hmm. seven movement patterns. What is it? You are like hinge, knee dominance, uh, push, pull, horizontal and vertical and like core, whatever that means. Um, and just a couple of exercises with it rather than trying to learn everything from, you know, off the get go. Um, and I don't know, I don't know. You guys could probably tell me how's the CrossFit community doing with this, especially with a lot of places that aren't open yet. So I, I'm probably not the best person to talk about this, but I, like, I know there are a lot of affiliates have said like, Oh, want our, uh, um, not a license contract with them with CrossFit for the year is up. They're not going to renew. Right. And like, you don't want that association and like all the CrossFit gyms are pretty much just for any of the listeners who are not sure, like the CEO um, had said some pretty controversial things probably about a month or two ago. And um, was pretty, was pretty insensitive about what, about what was common. His, in- his comments were pretty insensitive and long story short, like CrossFit communities or like gyms are just saying like, all right, well, we're not renewing our contract with them whenever it's up. So it's kind of a trend where people are just like, you know, instead of it being, Cross it on, I don't know, 33rd Street or whatever. It's now saying like functional space on 33rd Street. So they just like changed their names and like, but it's interesting because the games aren't taking place anymore, or at least none of the like the real, like the it's majority not of the be athletes the aren't gonna games go. anymore. It's going to be What's the it? rogue, the rogue games or something like that, right? There you go. But that, that'll be the one where most people go to, right? Because like, I think I read that only my Fraser would have gone to the Reebok CrossFit games. Yeah. So Reebok dropped their name with their affiliation with them, yeah. right? Reebok didn't want anything to do with them. So, like you said, if Rogue take, takes over the same model, but it's by a different name, that's that's their best shout. So, yeah. um, I think Rich Froning yeah. is doing the programming now. I don't think Dave Castro is doing that anymore. Oh, really? But, I mean, that's neither here I mean, nor there. But I think it, it is a big thing in terms of them removing the word CrossFit from their, from their businesses. Some of them, though, I have read that they're like, hey, you know, CrossFit, it's not just a business, it's a community. So they, you know, they, right. choose, they choose to be like, we're still CrossFit X, Y, and Z, you know? Um, but I think with them, they've had, they've had a bad rep, even from the beginning, you know, it, it we're, especially if we're talking about fitness trends now. Um, CrossFit was a fitness trend back in the early 2000s, right? And Yeah, and I, I didn't say still recently. Kind of, right? I mean, they're pretty big on law enforcement and like firefighters and they, they're big on that. They're really big supporters of that so i think a lot of them especially firefighters i think in in terms of how many people started crossfit or the people that were starting it were a lot of civil service people because they needed this um mode or the this method of training where they thought that we got to do all this other crazy shit you know um but back then that trend got a lot of bad you know bad publicity because of the methods they were using um and if we look at it now it's come a long way so i think in terms of a trend trends in itself they need to have some time in order for them to grow and get a better idea of the new the human body get more people you know uh, affiliated with it and that'll definitely help the trend become more of a norm um and there are trends though out there that aren't a norm still i mean there with a certain amount of people there are i mean if you guys do you, can you guys think of any of the trends that are still going around on Instagram or whatever, and people still kind of buy into it? Uh, the ones that people could still buy into, that's a little bit tough. Um, uh, actually, maybe not, right? Like, everybody's, got a, booty, everybody's yeah. got a booty band. Like, name one fitness uh, influencer that doesn't have a booty band. Exactly. I mean... Even like David got one. Like David got a booty band. Bravo <laughs> bands. Bravo, Bravo bands. Bravo Bravo bands. Slide into DMs and I'll you know send you the link. It's part of my um, OnlyFans promotion. Um, oh man, even that has <laughs> had a swift increase. OnlyFans. It's insane. But I should have I mean, invested in OnlyFans. And then the, like, is that even part of the fitness world? Like, there are a lot of fitness pages that I know that I used to follow 
and they just you know switched it up just for whatever reason i mean you yeah know. there are a lot of pages on the ig that i follow that are either crossfitters or fitness mm -hmm. influencers that yeah. have you know created an only fans too and from what i've read some of them are even the same mm -hmm. i think it's just a little more a little more raunchy i don't yeah. know yeah, that's weird. But hey, I mean, quarantine, right? The way, that's why I'm making OnlyFans. You know, it's going to be... <laughs> let's, why? let's dive into that. Let's no, unpack no. that. No, nah, that's for a later time. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's for our after show podcast. You guys want feet pics? Um, no, but... <laughs> no, but something like like uh, detox teas and like, right. you know, the, the oh, teas. Oh, the bone broth uh, diet. Oh, all that oh, what stuff. What is it? Bone broth cleanse? something like that um, i mean trends things. like yeah charcoal bone broth uh intermittent fasting um like there's a lot of stuff in regards to nutrition there's a lot um I mean, like herbal life right it's like that's herbalife. that's still a big thing well yeah, i told I mean, you someone reached out to me about that as well yeah oh yeah. yeah i mean listen man i mean she reached back out to me as well she was oh like, again hey, yeah, she's like, hey, how's it going? I was like... Dude, I told I you like, to tell oh, me straight up about it. Tell them what you feel about it, and then you'll be done. Well, I was... um, I just said, like, she was like, oh, come on, have you anything? And I was like, take more time, and it's not in line with... It's something like, it just... I don't know what I said. Something like, it just doesn't... It's not going to work out, whatever I said, so... Mm -hmm. You're breaking up with oh. someone you're not even going out with yet. Sorry. It's just, it's, it's just not for me. It's not me, I don't know what it's I you. Said. Something. No, and <laughs> yeah, watch Alex read, read those texts or read those DMs. So you're gonna so, call the corporate office, like, why are you DMing my man? It's, a, it's about Herbalife. It's not like that. <laughs> it's not like that. Trust me. No. Nah. So that, but that I don't like. Oh, I think I told you guys that when that person contacted me originally, she was like, "Oh, so how it's done is you have shakes," and I was like, "Uh, you lost me." You're talking about replacing meals with shakes. Like, you lost me. Yeah. Like I'm not, and I and I get really sensitive when someone talks to me about like oh you know so i'm um I'm, I'm i'm doing this plan and i was always a little like well there's three shakes a day and then you get one vegetable at the end of the day and i was like what the fuck is this thing like mm. how like how is that sustainable oh it's just to do this for this i'm like all right then what then you go back to your normal routine then you gain weight exactly shocker, you gain weight like shocker yeah the heart doesn't... go ahead no I thought that was pretty much me done but just like i just don't buy into that stuff you know yeah and i think that one of the things that i'm like kind of observing is that it's attractive to talk about one thing being the end all be all right because that's what people are looking for people are looking for like that that this is what i need to do this is what mm. i haven't been doing and this is what's going to get me this result um and so you make something like and then it becomes a whole like craze and it does become lucrative and then like you start to build a following and then you just build on that um and it's not to say like this is bad or this is good but um i just noticed the trend of things becoming more popular that are kind of like generalized and just like blankets um for example for example the herbal life or for example like um uh crossfit right like you just see like these people like doing snatches and doing cleans and like they have six pack abs and they're doing these i don't think they're pull-ups but something similar to a pull-up uh hipping pull-ups and then everybody thinks like oh wow if i do that i'm gonna be in that shape and then like it was like crossfit went hand in hand with like being paleo and then there were like people who were like oh yeah i gotta do this um and again it's not to say that any of these things are wrong but uh i think it's attractive to people just seeing like the the end all be all the cure all be all like and and it's weird right because like if you think back to like 100 years ago right for example where they had like those guys who would sell like elixirs and potions snake, like bottles. snake oil yeah and you know people would say oh i don't know and they're like no but this is it this is gonna you know cure your eye whatever is wrong all with it is is cured. basically alcohol or water with something you know yep. that's and but it goes back to that whole thing right like it's going to cure everything or it's going to help you with this. And then, you know, people just f found that it was good for them. Some people believed it, some people hated it. And then, but people were talking about it and enough people talk about it that more people try it and then you make a quick buck and then you get in and get out. Um, but it is interesting to kind of see like 
how long some of these things last, uh, regardless of whether they work or not. Yeah. And then also like that, that, uh, that CrossFit comment about like abs, like there's this, um, pretty funny face, uh, Instagram page I follow my buddy sent me. It's called, um, make wads great again, uh, make wads great again. And, uh, I'm like, look that up now. Mean, yeah, no, I think it's private. So you gotta request it. Oh, but basically God. one of the memes is like, <laughs> when you tell someone, right, sorry. Yeah, it's notorious for never getting accepted into the private wow. account. No, I'll send you screenshots. But basically one of them is like, when you tell <laughs> someone you have, when you tell someone you got a CrossFit six days a week and they ask you, oh, you must have sick abs. And the figure is like, oh, mm. really? And it's like, yeah. But the thing is, like, well, you like, know, a lot of these, the CrossFitters that are being promoted in these pages of CrossFit were all monsters. former D1, D2 yeah. athletes, oh, yeah. gymnasts. They have a prior, exactly. Yeah, they have a prior background. that's all like, they are. I think Matt Fraser has before he did. He was in the, the, he was the weightlifter had, in the Olympics. Yeah, for ten for ten years he was an Olympic lifter for ten years. So he yeah. so all not saying all he did, but like one of the modifications, my understanding of what he did was like, all right, he changed the style of his training, but already knew the foundations of doing all the Olympic lifts. He just yeah. had to learn to maybe do like kipping pull ups and maybe work on some endurance. But like I watched his easy, documentary, but, and they they were basically saying. If you look at pictures of him back in his weightlifting career, he was he was ripped as well. He had low body fat percentage. Yeah. You know, he was strong as fuck. Dude's a machine. Yeah, he was. But Dude, so that's the that's thing. Monster. People are already you know have ten plus years of refining their one skill, and then they go into CrossFit where it, it just you know they're just adding to it. I guess. Right. So. Yeah, um, but it's 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 also the other thing I will say about CrossFit, and then sorry, Jordan, I'm gonna cut you off real quick before I say it, like. The like I when I had been as well, I was like, I was very skeptical before I went. And uh, Amanda Bryan's wife kind of like I said, "Oh, I'll come along." And I was like, you know, what? like I was, I was a little unsure and intimidated because the class before, like you said, is like like eight guys who were like fucking monsters, like cleaning like serious amounts of weight. And you're like, ah, like 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 I was I was a little I was a little thrown off. Anyway, like, never make that noise again. <laughs> Oh man, screeching. But anyway, like, I I think that the issue, and this this isn't just this is any kind of group fitness class setting where if there's a set wad workout, right? The issue I think can lay with the individual where like if this is the workout and you know you shouldn't or can't do certain exercise or patterns, just being accountable from your end and saying like I can't do this or like they, like CrossFit were very good about saying this is the workout. Uh, this is a recommended weight and this is a scaled weight, right? And if you have to do less, we don't care. I think the best thing about commu- CrossFit was a community. The sense of community got when I was there, like when we were doing um, the the games. So the games, the first like four weeks of the qualifiers before you oh, get the open? to the regionals. The open, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, the games where the real people go, the athletes. But the open where like everyone at every box takes part and it, it's sick, right? Like I, mean, I didn't go past the open, right? But there was this one guy, like, there was, a, there was a workout. I think it was last March. This guy was a fucking animal. And then he was the last one going. And everyone was just, like, so fucking pumped up. And I was like, this is actually pretty sick. Like, he's the last guy because it was, like, you had to do so much by 10 minutes. And if you did that, you keep going for the next five minutes. And if, But the thing was is you kept doing more reps and you kept cleaning more weight. So if you started cleaning at, at like, 185, if you did, like, what if for the first 10 minutes, all your cleans are at 185, then between 10 and 15 minutes, all your cleans are 225. Then between 15 and 20 minutes, if you made the time, you're going to what? 285. So this guy was at oh like three or 400 or something. So he'd been going for like 20, 25 minutes straight. He was a fucking animal. And that's fucking insane. That, like, that, and that's kind of like, I know there are some precautions to be taken on that road, but like if someone's doing it and someone's doing it safely, it's sick. It, that sense of community is pretty phenomenal. It's not very common you see that in the workout space too often at least based on my experience so that sense of community i did think was pretty pretty cool but like i said if someone's in a workout and they're like oh you know i have a shoulder impingement oh well today you're doing overhead walking lunges and someone knows they shouldn't do that it's a little tricky right like you should know the way to scale it back but if the instructor doesn't know you have a shoulder impingement then that's not on the instructor so that's regardless of what sport what class it is right Fitting room. I've been in a fitting room. I love fitting room, right? I hear that place is cool. Ket- I haven't been yet. 
I love it. And it's awesome. I absolutely love it. It's, it's, it's right up my alley. The issue, no, I wouldn't say the issue, but the one concern I have when I go to fitting room is it's a lot of kettlebell stuff. And kettlebell exercises can take a long time to learn and master, right? Like, but we've had experiences with clients where like- I still haven't mastered takes, the swing. My swing is still kind still of shit. Haven't. Right. There oh, you go. He's a kettlebell so, master. What? No, I, oh, I, I, I've got, I've got opportunity for using kettlebells, right? I was also so, thinking like everybody in the quarantine became a kettlebell master. Ex- exactly, right? <laughs> That's another trend. All of a sudden, we're, all, we're all instructors. We're all, we're all certified in kettlebells. But the thing was, my thinking was like, oh man, like, okay, so we're doing a swing in the workout, which is fine if you're familiar with it. And it's fine if you're someone that's pretty quick at adapting exercises. But if it's your first time doing a swing, now you're doing on a circuit based fashion with two other things. Yeah. You're it, it's, I think it can be too much stress on the body for some people, not all. And not, and this is not, and this is not criticism of any class or structure. It's just that that combination can sometimes lead to too much stress on the body. And that would be my only thing is like, Oh, that might not be, that might be too much for some people to handle. But uh, it's it's sick. I love it, and the instructors are really good. Play good music. It's it's again. It's nice to have someone else be like, all right, here's a program. This is how you're doing it. These are weights. These are sets. As opposed to like us as already being trainers and programming like all the time of our clients, which we're very fortunate of doing. But it's nice to have someone else put you in a position of just doing as you're told kind of thing. Well, you're submissive. Not why. I'm, right. Not what I meant. <laughs> Not what I meant. I knew someone was going to pull out like that, though. Pause. Um, anyway, so, okay, so, I mean, those are Sorry. trends in terms of, like, fitness stuff. I mean, even nutritional trends are still kind of big. And like I mentioned before, you have those detox, cleansing, fit teas. They're, like, drink two of these a day and you'll lose uh. 30 pounds. Um, and, again, that's where I think education comes through, where, you mean know, it's not that easy. And like, I think you mentioned it earlier, Jacques, about, okay, you're on a diet, but when you're done with it, what's going to happen next? You're, I, had, I had a client, I had a client and, a, and then also a friend talk about liposuction. Like, oh, I shouldn't get liposuction. I was like, well, based on my understanding, if you continue or revert back to your habits prior to a procedure like that, do you not feed the issue again? Do you not, you don't, don't like, if, if you were feeding the issue prior you don't change your habits, even though a procedure it's taking place. Do you, does the issue still not exist? Exactly. Right. That's that's why a lot of these things should be habit forming and lifestyle, lifestyle based. Right. It's, it's not attractive. It's not sexy, David. Nobody wants know, to hear I about know. habits. Nobody wants to hear the six yeah. week, 12 week, you know, half a pound BS. People want to hear, how do I get, six pack abs in, in two weeks. day in two weeks not even a week preferably a day what? but if i have to <laughs> two weeks wasn't it i think i mentioned this on a previous episode recently where like ag had a client ask or some ask like hey can i get in second shape my body yo and if you like, mention that story birthday? one more time <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like the guy, guys, i swear to god nah we all know for our listeners it's good and he was like two weeks and it's like bro <laughs> <laughs> two weeks that's true it is true. Uh, I, and I, and I, I think that it makes a lot of sense. People just like have these preconceived ideas that they can do anything in a day um, or do like full on instant gratification. Day. I mean, and that's basically what it is. So what are the, yeah. what, go, go ahead. No, go ahead. no, no, no. All right, go on. Uh, what are some of the benefits that you have from like, let's, let's start, let's start looking at, let's say CrossFit. Cause we kind of like touched on it first. But what are some of the benefits from CrossFit? Um, I think it's the amount of conditioning you get. Like, it's the closest, one of the closest conditioning stress on the body I felt in sports. The fact that you can just go solid for 20 minutes, it's the closest thing I felt to sports. But, okay, David. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry, well, David. Uh, one thing that, I don't know, okay, real quick. So. You you said you know it reminded you of sports, right? Right. The, oh, yeah. No. The, the physiological. The just Keith. go do sports. I, the Keith. The Keith comment. Listen to me. So I don't. I, I have knee issues, right? And I can't really <laughs> run like I used to. But the the kind of intensity and the stress placed on the body 
mimics things close to sport. Like I said, I don't play rugby anymore, right? Like I don't, oh, I don't, I don't play hockey anymore. Hockey, you play on the rink at like 11, 12 o'clock at night. When we're with our clients, most days at 6 a.m., you think I'm going to get three hours of sleep. I mean, I'd like to play the game, but it's just not, it's just not possible yeah. right now. So if I can get something close, look, we can all agree, like with our clients, some of them have kids, they don't have time to go play like in a, in a, in a, in a weekday league game in the evening, right? They walk all day. They have their kids to go home to. So, like, if you can mimic certain sports, and and again, it's regardless of conditions. Like, if we talk about training in New York City in the winter. Like, we can train outside right now because it's nice and warm. But in the winter, that's a different. That you make game. them train like Rocky in Russia. You mean like go to the meat factory and like hit all the all no, the... Jacques. You know, you know. Go watch the fucking movies, bro. Um, I've seen the first three, I think. So I'm talking about the fourth one. That's when he was... Uh, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. One of the five I didn't watch. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, the fourth one is one of the best ones. I'm sorry. I don't know that. Do I haven't seen it? Get to it. So, no. Um, at least, okay, One of, for me, one of the benefits is it got a, a barbells into... <laughs> Benefit. So Jacques, of you gotta CrossFit. put a fucking background behind your head, dude. Um, uh, I was saying getting barbells into people's hands, like mm-hmm. showing them how to actually do that, especially for women. You know, women have, mm-hmm. you know, historically have been, I would say, I would even say oppressed in terms of when it comes to like the gym, you know, the, the gym. You know, you don't deserve to be in the gym. You deserve to do this, this, and that. I think this really helped open the doors for women to be a lot more active in terms of barbell training, which I think is great, especially for them because, you know, they do suffer from predominantly osteoporosis and, you know, uh, muscle, you know, atrophy and, you know, especially once they get older. And that's a, that's a big help in terms of their own health. That makes a lot of sense. I, I, I also agree that um, it's a fine line, but we, I've, I've seen some, some examples where like, Someone won't put a barbell on someone's hands until like the sixth or tenth week of a program. Like it's it's all relevant. It's all case by case specific, right? Like I think you can't say like, oh, no barbells in this person's hand until they've done this. Like, well, this person might actually deal, it might actually move better with a barbell, or like this person, even though showed signs in prerequisite movements of possibly not being able to cap- cap- to be able to handle a barbell, does it more than better than you even think. So it's like a but I also agree that you shouldn't just assume someone's used a barbell and be like, here you go. You have another workout? Well, here's a barbell and you're doing front squats. You know, like it's it's a little bit – it just depends. But uh, but you also have to know that like if you go to, let's say, CrossFit or a class and you're going to a regular workout, like knowing there's some beginner classes and other times, that's maybe in your best interest to do the research and know to go to those beginner classes, right? So it's not to say that the sport or the or the the box is wrong in that sense. It's that maybe the member hasn't gone to the uh, appropriate workout that's better for their current level. So it's like it can just depend. But, but also, I know that's not sexy. You don't want to start from the bottom. It's like I mean, in, in terms of getting things done to correct the form, let's say, people. I mean, right. people don't want to go through the motions of getting stuff done correctly. And I think. A lot of classes, you know, CrossFit or other boutique studios, whatever, a lot of them, in my opinion, that what I've seen is they, they do emphasize fundamentals, but, in, you know, they're saying, okay, come to two of these fundamental classes, and then they throw you into the lines, that, you know, then of like, well, okay, now you're going to do a push press. I'm like, you can't even fucking put a barbell over your head, you know, and then yeah, I, stuff like I've that. Yeah, I've seen that. I have seen that. Yeah, I have seen that, and I think it's not right, and it's – but again, I, I have also seen – not as often, but I've also seen it across the boxes where there's someone who's doing a one-on-one session, they're learning all the basics. Then once they're good and ready to go, they'll come to class. But yeah. it's, it's, it's like anything, right? Like I think also part of the culture in New York City is give me three different kinds of walkouts an hour so that I can get everything for my money, right? So it can be like, all right, like I went to a, I went to a facility in NoHo called uh, BioForce. It, like, I went like the week it opened. And Bio it was force? actually awesome. Bio force, B-I-A. So basically it was like the spin bike, you did intervals and, and, and rides on that. You did resistance bands and boxing. So it was like the three, which sounds like a lot, but again, if you're someone, in, yeah, don't worry, it wasn't all on the bike at the same time. I will. Oh well, you were boxing that. on the bike? 
with resistance. No, bands. I'm saying wow, you're not. Doc. Look at you're you. not. You're not doing them. All Trendsetter. At once. You get, Trendsetter. You're on the bike, then you jump off. You do the bands, and you then you do the clubs. But it's. I can see why. This like, is mimicking a real world bands. scenario. Somebody tries to steal your bike. You just hop off yeah. the bike, start doing Pandemic. some resisted kicks. And, and just start jabbing. COVID 2020, right? You gotta do everything on the city bike. <laughs> Holy! Smoke. I took a I took a class at Flywheel a couple years ago, and we were taking a class, and it was like a regular, you know, cycling class. And then they were like, "All right, guys," I didn't even know they had fucking weights on the bike. And then they were like, "All right, guys, grab the weights in front of you." I'm like, I'm like, where? It's, they're like, they're Two like these pounds. rods, six pounds and like eight pounds. They're like, "All right, so as you're riding, we're gonna press, we're gonna do crown." Like, I'm I'm not doing. It was kind of like, come on, and I also my I don't was feeling great. So I don't like I, like when I was doing the Peloton access parents and like on the app, and they're like, if I did a workout on the bike, I try to avoid it being like a body workout. I was like, no, I come to the bike to do cardiovascular workout. Like it's not to say that because I'm in my arms and I'm on cardiovascular. I was like, no, I came to like to get my lungs and heart working right. Like that's why I came to do it. And then, I, but what they were cool, the instructors would say like, hey, if you don't want to do the arm workout. Just keep this cadence for five minutes, and I was like, "Yeah, I'll do it. Fine." Yeah. Just because that was that was better. I didn't like. I didn't want to do this me, for two minutes on my arms or. Let me ask you something: or, is is Peloton is that live or is it like pre-recorded? So there are live classes, and then what I, I again, this is why I actually fell in love with it was, let's say you wanted a class that was twenty minutes, you can filter your search for a twenty-minute class, or a ten-minute, or a thirty-minute, forty-minute, an hour, whatever. Then you can filter on the music genre as well. So mm. if you want a rock workout, I'll be like, all right, here are the here are the here are the workouts of rock genre music, and here are the different kinds of lengths, and here are the instructors, right? And then based on, like, I never took a spin class Equinox, right? And I think when everything whenever it opens up, I'll go, I'll do it because I think it's something I'd like. But once you listen to certain instructors, you know why it's like with trainers, why you'd want to work with someone other than other people. Some instructors on Peloton are really good at saying like, all right, in the next 10 seconds, you're going to make sure your cadence is at this and your, um, and your, your resistance is at this, right? So you can 10 seconds kind of mentally prepare, but always get ready to crank up your speed and whatever. Whereas some are like, oh shit, uh, I don't say oh shit, but it's like, all right, go. And you're like, what am I doing? And they're like, all right, turn and they haven't, they, or they've either briefed it, but not been too clear about it. Mm, There's yeah. one guy, Sammy Woe, he plays, this, he plays rock music. He's always very good. He's not like, yeah, let's fucking go. But he's like, go, he's, he's of a good energy, right? And that's just like, what, what vibes are with me? It, there's so many different kinds of instructors. And the other thing I will say was like, you can, uh, they even expanded their platforms to so not just bike workouts, but like workouts to like their resistance training, body weight, stretching. Uh, they obviously have the treadmill now. So like, but I've done that in the past. Like when I'm like, oh, you know, let me, let me do like a 10 minute like AMRAP or a little body weight, a little core workout, like just to finish off. And it's nice to have someone go like, do this, do this, do this, do that. And it's easy. And it's what, 12 bucks a month? It's nothing, man. You spend oh, wow. more than that on lunch. You spend more than that on one lunch here. Like if you go to Just Salad or where, or Sweet Greens, wherever the hell you want to go, you spend like $15. It's so if anyone Bodega, says the fuck out of here. $2. Right, what, when you, <laughs> We're not like you, well, Jack. Yeah, well, we don't go to fucking all these fancy places. No, nah, I try to What's, that, what's that vegan place you go to? Just Chloe's? By Chloe, by Chloe. We went. Though. We by went Chloe. once. That was actually pretty good. We went to by Chloe. We, we were taking a class did we, once. When did we go? Wow. Oh, right. I just yeah. Forgot. I, uh, wow. No, I. Because you threw him under the bus. Wow. No. I'm trying to think when it was. It was when we did the, uh, that, um, that certification Olympic lifting weekend, right? I don't. But that guy I was mad. That guy was mad because I was lifting like I was doing CrossFit. Remember? If I did more than three reps in a minute, he's like, no, put it down. This is not CrossFit. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. What if my body can take six reps in a minute? You're going to like, and I was, that's where like. He's the teacher, CrossFit Jacques. Called, yeah, but CrossFit. He tells back you three, you do up. three. Jacques is breaking the mold. He'll fight the teacher. Fuck. With the resistance bands and the bike. <laughs> <laughs> Kick Jacques knees. That no. class I went to though was by myself, so I got I got the class by myself, and it was so it was like a one on one. Who knows if it's open? Yeah, and she was the one that told me about the talent hack. Talent hack? I, think I showed you guys. 
Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you guys off air about it, but like, it's a, uh, it's a pretty cool, it's just, a pretty cool. Yo, thing. Angel, he doesn't tell us shit, bro. Yeah, he doesn't really tell. Who us is this much. guy? Actually, I told you both about this thing, but I'll tell you <laughs> after. <laughs> definitely did. All right. Anyway, all right. Uh, Herbalife. Herbalife. Benefits. Go. Community. That's good. Yeah. No, because right, yeah, if community is a good one, yeah. Because if you're, if you're. And it gives you some structure, right? If you don't have mm. structure, it, it gives you a daily structure. It gives you a weekly structure, I think. It, and it gives you the, the educational standpoint of being more familiar with your calorie consumption. Or and what awareness. Calorie, how many, like that. Yeah, and the qualities of nutrient-dense foods, how high, um, how all that calorie quantities, it gives you a better understanding of that. But I, I don't agree with take your breakfast out for a drink. I, like, like, swap it out. Like, I... A powder what's in that powder like well, that's also like um uh similar to weight watchers not in the form of like the powder but like building that foundation of knowledge like i mean weight watchers has actual food right yeah and I mean, they, that's one of the things you know? yeah and they gauge they kind of like it was like a fad i guess it still is like a thing um, but I know like a couple I know of people clients, have done it still. Yeah, yeah. I know people who have done it and had like a lot of success with it because it's easy. It's simple. And it kind of like teaches you uh, like nutrient dense foods, like what's going to be nutrient dense and what's not that nutrient dense. Um, and then you yeah. can kind of like go by the point scale. So uh, yeah, community is good because that helps you. Um, it gives you a support system. Yeah. Right. Cause not everybody's going to have great days all the time. Most of us have like really bad days and really bad weeks. Um, and it's good to have that support system. You have that person, that coach, or, you know, even your friends that are doing it. And then you, you can fall back on them and they can help support you. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day too, is a lot of, you know, calories in, I don't, I don't even want to say calories in calories. Out. I want to say, ex, you know, the, the, the amount of calories or the amount of energy you're expending a day compared to the amount of calories you eat. You know, it's like, that, that's the biggest thing too. But one thing, uh, a con that I would say about things like Herbalife is you, you don't learn about different foods. You're aware about what you eat and things like that, but you're not necessarily eating to fuel your body in a way. In my opinion, I think you're, you're eating to lose weight mm -hmm. rather than like performance right. or you know, getting a better, a better idea or a better life in you know, a relationship with food. Yeah, maybe. weight loss is the ultimate goal, though, right? In in things that have so. a life, yeah. like the majority of people coming yeah. in are like, I want to lose this much weight, and I want right. It, that's far as I understand. Yeah, but but then I mean, then we we know this too when we've when we've taken our certifications. You have when you when you have the goal of weight loss, cool. They're let's say in a way they're they are um, programming for that little that goal of weight loss. But what happens after? You know, it's right. like you're not gonna live off of shakes for the rest of your life now. Yeah, that's and that's I think like when we've done we've faced through our uh, education of being trainers that we've learned like a there are no shortcuts and then b like, what's sustainable right like if like uh someone talked to me earlier about how they haven't had a carb in four weeks and I'm like do you miss them they had a what you know they haven't had any carbs in four weeks oh my god and in my head I'm like how about you just monitor some like about oh they don't feel lethargic anymore right and i i think like if you controlled your meat intake or your red meat intake at least you would probably not feel lethargic there also but everyone responds differently right everyone's body is a little different but like i i i, I you know I don't, I don't really say anything anymore i just listen i just you know i ask how people are doing how they like it if it suits them and they're seeing results and that's good for them right but yeah. having like but if they're not getting not, results I refer right. and then also, like, yeah, I would just refer out because it gets too complex. And the last thing yeah. I want to do is tell somebody not to eat red meat and then they right. slip and they fall and they go unconscious because they don't have enough iron. Right. Like, yeah, no, uh, it's, it's all, I want. yeah. I mean, look, like I know we mentioned that, that client of mine the other day and like when she came to me, she's like, Oh, I want a food plan. And this is when I was, all, all my protein was pretty much like animal animal based protein now it's a bit more uh varied but back then she was like wow that's a lot of animal protein and i was like <laughs> so i do it every day right i didn't know any different and then like i can 
now we're interested about to see how it was. It was so much animal protein, right? But like, mm-hmm. everyone's Not different. Like and meat. And not as much as I used to. I feel better. I I try. I I think if you can have as much like fresh food, and that's the other thing my friend was talking about was like, oh, uh, I asked fish, and he's like, oh, well, I just don't like the frozen kind. I was like, don't get frozen anything, man. Like, don't. Yeah, but like a in nice general, piece of food, salmon. Like, try it exactly. Piece nice of salmon piece of cod. But you want to avoid it frozen. Is that fair to say? I don't want. I mean. I would suggest fresh. I wouldn't say necessarily to avoid fresh because it is expensive. You know? But you could, this is my argument whenever someone says about like, what's well, something's fresh, right? If you wanted to be financially smart about your meals, you could go to McDonald's every day, right? And spend how much a meal? Six, seven bucks a meal, right? You're saving money. It's cheaper. But the quality of food in your body is it helping you live a longer life. Yeah. Like, do you want to do you do you want to invest in your health and your future? Like it's actually this the way I like someone was trying to lecture me about uh, Alfie's food. So Alfie gets real food. Alfie gets like rice. Alfie beans, gets gourmet food. Vegetables. He's better than way, most bare way all day. He's better than most people. A client of mine joked. I told him how my how Alfie eats. He's like, oh, he's better than me. I was like, I mean, I, I I'm not gonna deny that because he's pretty good, but. Someone was trying to tell me, I was actually in the neighborhood, and she was saying how, oh, you know, um, I hear it's actually like they live longer if you give them real dog food. So, the, just for example, right, like dog food that can stay in a bag in the closet in the cupboard for two months and not go off. Like, how, what's in that? And it's like food that you can keep, in, like, in your kitchen for a month or two on the shelf that's not gone off. Like, what's in that food that, you know, it's not fresh? Do you make your own pasta, Jacques? <laughs> I don't make my own grains, no. No, but also, I mean, in terms of eating real food, my back in Ecuador, whenever I would go to visit my grandparents, um, they would, I mean, they would have like three or four dogs just roaming around the fucking like fields they have and shit. They, like my grandma would be making food for them. Like she would make fresh food in the, fu- like I would go into the kitchen and there's a big ass fucking pot of food. I'm like, Oh, what are we making today? He's like, oh, this is for the dogs. I'm like, oh. And you not, eat with them? Not for me. Great. You know? Yeah, we're going back to back with like poor nutritional advice. First it was the mold. Now it's <laughs> eating dogs. Fucking dog food. Jacques. Yo, Jacques is like. No, oh, no, no, I actually I'm had. Telling you, I'm not telling you to eat dog food. I'm just saying <laughs> we invest in having real. Food. Eat no, them no, no, Scooby no, no, snacks. No, no. <laughs> I'm just saying if you want to invest in a longer and a healthier life, invest in your food. Don't like try and take shortcuts and like and say like oh this is cheaper like yeah i mean you can eat shit off the floor if you want it's cheaper isn't it like but like what that do for my long term health oh no man all right no Listen. no joke there's human shit like a block away from here so there's what human shit like a block away you're eating human shit now what is going on i'm not eating it i said there is human shit i didn't say i was eating it oh okay, so, right, right. okay. it was just right all right i got it you spoke about it right after you spoke about eating stuff and then you're like, all right, human shit, a block away. <laughs> you um, took, you but, got a baggie with it. you? All right. So uh, I looked into it a little bit because I wanted to check out like Herbalife, like if they were like a, what do you call it? Like a weight loss plan. And apparently they do primarily work with like short term weight loss. Uh, but then also according to Google, I mean, this is according to Google. So take it with a grain of salt if you'd like. Uh, but they got sued in like 2008 for having like uh, they were sued by the state of California for having excess or having like the laboratory tests indicated that they had levels of lead in several herbal life products um, and it was in excess of California state law and it could lead to liver problems for an extended period of time. Um, and I didn't know wow. that. Wow. I don't know if you guys knew you that. Probably well, not. Because because that. Though. <laughs> so it reminded me of, you guys probably didn't see it, but uh, a show called Aqua Teen Hunger Force um, used to be on Adult Swim. This is a huge segue. Okay. Um, but one of the things, it was kind of like uh, South Park, essentially, right? Like one of those animated shows. And one of the guys on the show, he had um, done this diet plan because he was like overweight character on the show. And it was called, he thought it was called the South Bronx Paradise. 
but uh, after he didn't really read like the label and he was like, I don't read labels. That's a part of the whole program. You don't read labels. You just take this supplement and then you just start losing weight. And then one of the guys picked up the box and he read it and he was like, it's not South Bronx paradise. It's South Bronx parasite. And then like he read, he looked in it and he was like, what is that? And then like all of a sudden it was just like a parasite that like grew in him and then it was like eating his insides out. All right. Huge segue. But the fuck. <laughs> It's a cartoon, but it just like it's one of those things that it was kind of like playing on the whole. You don't read the labels when you're doing like this nutrition plan because all you're doing is just like sticking to the plan, and then like next thing you know, you lose the weight, but it comes at a cost. So it was just like playing on yeah. those sort of like things. Um, the cost is you gain it all back after the diet's over, <laughs> I mean, right? Because you don't really like you have to learn. I think, and that's the that's the difference between like habit stuff and like just doing a program for the program's sake it's like the habits you really have to take time and think about what you're doing and form it around your lifestyle and then make it part of your lifestyle yeah um but the other stuff is kind of like you just add it and then just hope and pray to god that it actually works and sometimes it does but then it works for like that small amount of time and then it's done um but yeah you're right it does help with having like some community and it does build to have that support system where you might not have that on your own, right? So that's where a lot of people find success. Yo, Jacques, you move, bro? You're like Mr. Worldwide. Where are you, where are you, where are you Yo, going? Gotta I'm like keep moving. To, my, First of all, I wouldn't have been that like, brave. I, I, mean, oh, I wouldn't I'm have bought the laptop mad. out. Nope. I would have been on the phone. Nah, it's Midtown. Nah, Midtown's okay, man. It just... Oh, and then and then my portable chargers were, were dead as well. We weren't working. Mm. Yeah, I go to the, the, the subway. You know how people plug in and they start playing the the Xbox and PS4? I've seen that. It's like, insane. Where do they plug it on the subway? On the subway platform. Some subways, so you got to really look. Like in my stop on 137, there is, I think, that I know of three outlets, but they're really high, like next, mm-hmm. to, the, next to the ceiling. So, you gotta, so I've seen people, you know, plug in and they have their phone like this. Just yeah. waiting for the train. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's talk a little bit because we spoke a little bit about like uh, nutrition stuff. We spoke a little bit about uh, workout trends or fitness trends. Um, what about like gear? And I'm not talking steroids, but I'm talking about Anavar. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm not trying to say roids, but I'm saying roids. Uh, like shoes. Or gloves, or straps, or headbands, or like shorts. Things that create uh, beneficial or maybe not so beneficial uh, like performance, right? Like so when you, when you go away, when you say, all right, this is fitness, and you take away nutrition benefits and like uh, its relationship to performance, and you take away like uh, style, like your workout style and its relationship to performance, you always have like the gears. Like people are saying like, oh, I got this shirt and this shirt is like, the I don't know. Yeah, or something like a compression, it barely covers increased blood flow, uh, all that stuff. So what do you guys think about, can you guys name some of these things that you that come to your head when you talk about like fitness gear or fitness swag? That we think are beneficial or that are just there? Let's just listen in general and then we'll kind of okay. like, we'll take some. So go for it. So- You have your belts, you have your wrist wraps, you have your knee wraps, (laughs) Everything. you have your uh, Olympic lifting shoes, you have your Chuck Taylors, Uh, you have the, that, do do they still call it voodoo floss? Uh, I think so. uh, The voodoo bands, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. They have that. I mean, you have, what else do you have? You have the fucking uh, gloves, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Then you have like chalk, smelling salts, um, compression shorts. I've seen people work go into the gym with fucking compression shorts when they're not even gonna squat or deadlift. It's like <laughs> I see a guy wear a cup once. Oh yeah, it's like who are you fighting? Yeah, are you no, I mean those are the, those are yeah. That's what comes to mind though when it comes when I oh and the here. um the mouthpiece you remember the mouthpiece the mouthpiece guy yeah I think Jacques talked a, a little bit about what did was it you that t- spoke a little bit about the jaw thing I Jaws saw size? this it was something yeah. like a mouthpiece you put in and then yeah it's supposed to we increase. Ch- well suppose you you like you 
you like crush it with your mouth and it's, it's called jaws uh, size yeah I, I mean look like you don't i look i i think it's, it's a one-way ticket of tmj <laughs> maybe i like to tmj maybe. oh really so yeah it's like that a shit real is horrible dude it'll fucking yeah. mess with you man Damn. There are times where I have to wake She's up so and I have to just like oh, massage sick. my like the muscles right here for like half an hour. It hurts like hell. Damn. Yeah. But look at anyway. it this way, like if you're we do it for facial expressions, talking, eating, but like it's like for example, like, we just talk about golf, right? We use our hands every day, but like my hands and forearms never work like that. So like, dude, my forearms are like on fire. So like, I'm assuming of draw size. Like we will, I think it claims to thin your to tone your face, right? Is that what it says? Which I, I mean, look, like it, it tones. Well, look, think about it. Tones it tones your jawline. Things, it gives you a better right, aesthetic. But if you're doing, which goes if back you're doing to people want oh. that shit. You know, that's why they buy it. But I think it's fair to say if you place stress on the muscles around your face that aren't usually. Ex- exercise in a certain way of course it's going to create an adaptation like and of course it's going to like it's not saying you do three that's a 10 off guard but like i don't know it's it's all relevant all i know is that the guy the the guy the the owner i guess or the guy that's in the commercials Mm. i don't know how he's able to do that shit with a straight face it's like if it was me like did the guys like oh just put the same mouth like this like and i I would just laugh my ass off if, if that was me but um hey it's his business right it's his business. You do what you gotta do, man. Yeah. You sell that shit. Hey, he's trying making a small fortune from it as well. Oh, yeah. So. I'm not. So exactly. That's why you laughing. Yep. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about let's talk about them. So we got belts. Yay or nay? Nay. Yeah, I think they're good for to some extent. Nay. I my personal take, right? But I'm also not someone that's doing powerlifting or lifting up selling heavy weights. I and it, this also ties in with like knee braces. I don't believe in them. Like knee wraps as I, well. I don't. Knee wraps, knee uh, sleeves. You know what? Like my yeah, my feeling is this, right? Like this is just this is just my opinion. Like if how do you think that load on your back? Let's see your back squatting. This in terms of physics, right? If there's a certain way in your back, and your body is either not fit or not strong enough to. Uh, go again, push away the resistance, right? Like, it over- overcome the load of the resistance, right? And uh, away from gravity as well. Let's say you're the bottom of the squat, coming the way up, right? The highest mm-hmm. part. I don't think knee sleeves are going to save you, man. I really don't think. Like, I'll tell you this as well from experience of knee injuries. When I had um, knee sleeves, right, for combat from, in- from an injury, so here he goes again, there was knee injuries, right? The issue with it was it made you feel like you didn't have an injury, Right? So, the, the the worst thing was it made you feel like you didn't have the injury, right? So, mm-hmm. you would go hard as if you didn't have the injury, which is almost worse because your body doesn't have – the way I look at it is if you look like a, at a character on a game, right? If you had damage after like a fight or something, you – different parts of your body have like a completion percentage of how far they can go up. Just, just think about it, right? Like when you have an injury, let's say, David, do you have an injury in your shoulder? He's <laughs> don't laugh. Trying to make this easier for our listeners. You said you had a shoulder impingement, right? Years ago. Okay, let's say your right shoulder is worse than your left, right? If you've had an injury, if it comes to regeneration, your right sh- right right shoulder might ever get back to 100%. It might get to like 98, 99, right? So if you have the knee sleeve, the knee brace, you might think you're able to go back to 100%. And the point I'm trying to say is you might go harder than you should. You might forget you have the injury and you might overdo it. With, with belts, again, I don't lift too heavy Wait. a weight, so I'm maybe not the best person to Are ask, we talking but... about knee braces after an injury or while you have an injury or knee wraps First of all, in we terms were talking of about belts. <laughs> you said about <laughs> to fucking knee belts. I'll go back to, I'll go back to belts. I, personally, I don't, I'm not for them because I think I don't see what a belt... I, I, I don't see it. All right, David. Uh, David, you think you... Go ahead. Uh, I think they can be. Uh, I think they could be useful to at a certain weight. I mean, if you're if you're trying to lift two times your body weight, three times your body weight, then maybe yeah, you're gonna have to need it. But for the amount of people that What's... we train normally, 
they don't need it because they don't know how to use their core itself or their trunk. So, right? but talk a little bit about like if someone wants to lift two, three times their weight, why they would be benefiting from using a belt. I would just add a little more support. If you're, if you're trying to compete, if you're a power lifter and you're trying to be the best, then you have these things that are going to help you. I mean, you could only lift so much with your, with your natural core. And I think the belt, if you're using the belt correctly, can support you. I mean, there are people that use the belt super fucking tight that they don't train their, 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 their They can't their get abdominals. that full expansion. Like exactly. They're, they're and tightening that, and, it up. And, yeah. you can't and that's really usually like... people that, and people that do that, in my opinion, are people that don't need to wear a belt mm -hmm. in general. You know, if you're already somebody that's lifting a lot of weight without a belt, and you're competing in powerlifting, and you have to get to a certain weight, then lifting, a, then using a belt could be beneficial. Not saying that you need it; it could be beneficial for performance. Yeah. Um, but if you have, a, like, in from my experience, if I have a client that's coming in and they're like, "I want to lose weight, I want to get stronger," blah, blah blah. Okay, cool. And then they come the first session with the belt. I'm like, take that shit off. Like, you don't need it. What about? All right. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but since we're still on the topic um, of belts. Uh, what about as it relates to like daily activities and things like that? Like you see some of those like UPS workers or like, you know, whatever. well, that's not their fault. I think, you know, I think, it, I like, think they can claim insurance, right? If they have a belt, they can be insured for policies as well. I don't know. I don't know. That yeah, sounds, I, I that sounds like, like pretty practical though. Cause it almost looks like you're preventing, you're, you're trying to prevent an injury from happening in the first place. So then yeah, insurance and... would back you up. No if, pun intended. If you, got, if you... <laughs> <laughs> that's good. But I guess like if the insurance company sees that you, you've taken the precautions, you wear the right footwear, and you're wearing a back brace, and mm -hmm. then you still injure yourself, then they're like, all right, well, this guy's been pretty serious about taking precautions. He's still injured his back. Uh, but I, but I've, I've read that. Like, look, the, the thing as well, like it definitely won't hurt you to put these kinds of things on. I just don't know what the if I don't know what the how much how much, how strongly it benefits you. That's just like and that's not me trying to be difficult. That's just I don't know how something external can manipulate your internal feels. You know. Mm -hmm. What about you, Angel? We have we, me, and David, but what do you think? No, I kind of I it's it's a uh, in between, uh, but I I kind of side with a little bit like with David. I think it's like case specific. Um, but I do see what you're saying. Like, uh, at least from like the PT standpoint, like you do have to like train the core muscles. And David said that too, right? Like you got to train the core muscles. I've a lot never of used a belt and I don't think I'll ever yeah. use one because I'm never, I'm, I don't think I'm mm. to the point where I'm, I need, I need one. Right. Exactly. You know? So right. I think it's, it's case specific. Like if you're power lifting, um, or you're training to be a power lifter or whatever, or you're lifting those maximum loads and you feel like you need that in order to support you. Um, through those lifts then it makes sense um, but at the same time like I don't think like average Joe probably needs it I think most people can do with just their core like using their core musculature to get the job done um, but at the same time we can I don't know because uh, this, this is gonna like I'm gonna segue into the next one which is the wrist wraps right mm -hmm. so do we believe in wrist wraps because uh that's the other thing too. Like you can make the argument that you don't necessarily need wrist wraps that if your forearm strength or your grip strength is the weakest link, then maybe you need to work on that. But however, uh, you can continue to lift more if you use the wrist wraps. So what do Wait, we do? I'm sorry. Are yeah. we talking about the wrist wraps or the straps? I just wrote wrist. I guess the I guess I was, the, you I was talking you kind of like wrap around. Yeah, I was talking so straps. Kind of that was a good call. I was talking straps, but I wrote wraps. I don't know which one you said in the beginning. Maybe you said both wrist wraps. I don't, I don't remember. But let's let's go straps. Let's go straps first because straps makes uh, that's a that's a better argument. So I I remember speaking to Brian about this as well, and like if you were deadlifting, your body could probably lift like. I don't know, a bit more than you would if you didn't have the straps. And I, I do think that, like, it's a value argument. You just mentioned, like, oh, well, maybe it's your forearm strength you need to work on. But, like, I also think there's value in training with them for periods. I wouldn't say for long stretches of your program, maybe, like, mm. for 
for a few weeks at a time. And maybe, again, if you're trying to bridge a gap between – if you're trying to – again, that's all relevant, right? It's all like if you're trying to hit certain lows, if your competition is expecting you to start the – I don't know, I haven't done any competitions to, 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 to name any, but like I'd say, like imagine, for example, you're a deadlifting starter, you had to hit 350 or 400 pounds, but you're only able to do like 320 without straps. I think it's useful for you to do it with straps for a little bit. I think it's a little bit like um, – I don't know if it's a good analogy. Like if you're bowling and to have the, um, uh, what'd you call them? Uh, you what are those things called? No. Um, you know, when you're, when you're bowling and they have the, the rails oh. to avoid it going down the gutter straight away. So if you don't get a straight shot, it doesn't, the bumpers, right? I think there's benefit for you training in bowling, for example, with the bumpers to begin with, right? There's no hmm. point in just, trying to get straight shot every time. I think there's, there's, there's benefit in doing that. And I think it's the same applies to deadlifting. I think if you can deadlift with the straps and get used to weight, let's say it was 350, because you can only do 325 without them, I think there's benefit in that, 100%, right? But I also think you should add into consideration that, all right, you want to make sure that you do the accessory work on the side or prior where it's like really work on your forearm strap, right? I think if you're doing both in conjunction, you're on your right way. But I don't think it's a means to say like, oh, I'm just going to do this to kind of substitute it out. I think it's mm. good to help you bridge a gap, personally. What about you, David? Well, it's the same as belts. You bridge you know, you the... Use, you use belts to bridge the gap. Bridge you the use gap. belts in certain periods of your training cycle. And, you know, in order... The same thing with straps. You know, for me, in my opinion, when you do... When you're in a powerlifting meet, you're not allowed to use straps. So that, so that argument in, in terms of like, I need them to get, no, you don't need them in terms right. of Olympic lifting. You know, there are things that we use straps for, for higher repetition things. So your hands won't get ripped, mm -hmm. especially if you, if, especially if you have a competition in a week or in a couple of days and you're doing high rep stuff, <laughs> um, you don't, you know, you don't want to rip your, your calluses mm -hmm. right before a meet the fuck it could fuck you up. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so it, same. I I I put straps and belts in the same category because you could use them in certain training cycles to get some other extra load in. You know. Okay. Uh, what about wrist wraps? I use wrist wraps, and I think that's just because I've I've had wrist issues in the past, mm -hmm. and that's probably just from years of doing shit incorrectly. But I think in terms of, you know, anatomically think speaking. Yeah. There are people with wrists that are smaller in diameter than other people. And if you yeah. are trying to lift a shit ton of weight over your head, that's that one. Imagine, you know, putting a 500 pounds on a little golf tee, you know, it, it's like, it, it's going to be insanely hard. So I think wrist wraps could help in terms of your, you know, your wrist, you know, extending or flexing too much. Yeah. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean that you only should ever wear wrist wraps. It's happened to me while benching. That shit scared the hell out of me. Or <laughs> I'm just like, you got like a couple, couple of plates on there and then all of a sudden a little <laughs> <laughs> That's all it takes. Oh, shit. You're just like, rack, rack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, and that's why you don't have a floor trainer around because they're oh, in the man. lounge chilling. Let's not even go there. Uh, let's forget <laughs> about those days. Those days are in the past, David. You just wait. Watch, watch we go back to work and be like, all right, blue shirt. Gray shirt. What the gray shirts now, right? Nope. Yeah. Nope. So, uh, all right. So we know Jacques' position on knee wraps. Uh, David, <laughs> what's your position on knee wraps? Um, because aren't they supposed to like help with like like uh? They're supposed to help the in the stretch reflex? shortening cycle. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So when I've seen wraps being used, it's for. I mean, first is for compressing your knee for it to be warm mm -hmm. i mean that's what people use it for yeah other people use it to help you with the bounce when you catch a clean or a, or a snatch mm. or when you want to bounce with the weight which is another topic entirely but there are people that use it because they feel that they can't i mean i've seen people use it to squat 185 pounds 205. and i'm not saying that's not a lot of weight for some people it's it is relative, a lot of weight right yeah but you need to not use wraps to get everything, you know, you're not, it's a crutch. It's, you know, you can't, you're not going to be able to use that all the time. Yeah. So. That makes sense. That makes sense. Even using the stretch shortening cycle to begin with, right? Like that is you, what you're saying is 
I mean, you're training two different things. I guess it depends. Because I, I was going to say what you're saying is your your body isn't strong enough to lift the load without that stress shortening like reflex or stress shortening cycle. Yeah. But technically, like sometimes you use that in order to complete a lift or something of that sort, right? So I can't necessarily exactly. say like that's that is what it is. Um, but yeah, I, I the other thing with the the wrist wraps, I was gonna say, I know uh, when you talk about wrist diameter. Mm -hmm. I think if you're training kettlebells, that can be a benefit of using the wrist wraps because more often than okay. Jacques more outside, often guys. Not, yeah, I just think I didn't know. What was it a more dirt bike? You and Harlem, huh? <laughs> well, there's no rebels anymore, so um, I know the the like if you, some some people have said like, oh, it hurts my forearm, and I also think like that just comes with like callousing your like you your forearms, suck it up. but well i yeah in essence i think that. but in but the beginning also, in the beginning you know there are people that need it you know when we took yeah, that kettlebell think, certification well, sheesh well, i thought forearms like my forearms i was like my forearms were swollen this whole joint was just like bam like i had like a lump and then it's two days right so the first day you spend all that time trying to get the coordination and then the second yeah. day, you're supposed to do like your flow and then present it. And my forearms. For level two, you mean? Uh, yeah. I think it was level one was the most craziest shit that ever happened. And then level two, I was kind of like, all right, I know what's going to happen if I don't practice this shit. Yeah. Um, then yeah, the only thing I had. Placement, you know? It's right, like exactly. Placement, yeah. I think timing of it too, right? Like you, if you time it right, you can select the placement better. But if you time it wrong, it's going to go wherever it wants, wherever it falls. But it also. I also like that's why like I've seen this and who wrote it and I kept I stick with it like more resistance is more assistance of kettlebells because if you're doing a kettlebell clean let's say from a dead stop position there we go. <laughs> but yeah, it has to do with well, where David. you put it in, right? I mean, pause. Yeah, but it, it's like I don't know, little David. I don't know. But I, I think with the kettlebells, like <laughs> oh angel, I think like if you're the kettlebell was in. The lighter one, really, I, I don't even know if I can do that. So I'm just going to sit You're going to break your computer. If you, if you try, try it's going to break the fucking computer. My thing is going to overheat. Yeah. No, I think with the kettlebell, it's like, it's a, it's a common thing, right? When like, when the first person, when the first time anyone cleans it, it's usually like, it like flops on your forearm, right? And I think like having the heavier kettlebells allows you to kind of like drop it around your wrist and make right. sure you're clean, like no pun intended, you're cleaner about doing the method, right? So um and and that's why like, jokes for days yeah we were like why today you know? did you guys hear about the corduroy pillows what? Nah, that sounds disgusting about the corduroy pillows i hate corduroy i hate the the, the fabric they're making headlines everywhere i hate that nah that sounds uncomfortable though it sounds terrible all right a uh, joke, lift, oh all right headlines so, guys. <laughs> all the jokes that we made and then it just fell down all right. Uh, oh, lifting shoes or like, um, what you call it? Uh, Converse, flat shoes. Um, lifting shoes. I mean, I've only lifting I mean, shoes the only for reason I've ever. <laughs> I mean, I have only oh, oh, lifting shoes for oh, lifting, you know. And but I think when I was first starting out, I never had them. I would always use like, do it on my socks or get like Chuck Taylors or something really flat, because it'll mm. help you in terms of trying to connect to the floor better yeah you don't need olympic lifting shoes i think if you're if you're going to uh compete then they could be beneficial because at the end of the day all it does is it reduces the amount of dorsiflexion your ankle needs basically all it does so why don't you just work on your ankle mobility you know it's in the ankles it's in, the ankles. Your it's in the ankles i'm i so i i I got a pair at like a Black Friday sale because it was a sale of like two twenty five or seventy five bucks, and I was like, oh, if I ever use them, I'll, I'll got them. So I, I I've liked squatting in them, but like what David said, I think that you're kind of feeding into a problem. Or I, but I think look, like if you're an athlete and you're competing in the Olympics, whatever, and you need to gain an edge, I get it. It makes sense. It's illegal. Like you'll do anything to gain an edge, right, on an opponent. But I think that, like, if you're, like, 
I've seen this as well, and this drives me crazy. When people do uh, the lifters and then they have the heel wedges, like they have a, like a plate, do a squat. I'm like, okay, there's just there. I there's definitely benefits to doing heel elevated squats. It's more quad activation. But I think if you're doing that because you have an issue with getting depth because of your ankle mobility, like, look, it's not a wrong thing, but I think you should maybe think about it in a different angle. Like, is there a reason why I need the shoes? And, like, that's just that's just my thing. Like, I, I have them, but I actually prefer walking out of Metcons than Nike Metcons, like, for everything. Like, squat, deadlift, flat, nice and flat. I say flat, my foot's not flat, <laughs> for the most part. That's that's my figure. Like I think it's good, but I think it's like what David said. I think you're you're gonna benefit from walking on your ankle with the rookie at the same time. Yeah. Shout out to Nike. Yeah, for Nike, real. the trainer feed wear. the trainer feed Medcons. Uh that would be fucking dope. Green as well. I fucking get them. All right. Uh yeah, Jacques, make it happen. Idea. Uh the the Medcon sixes are coming out. That shit looks fire. They it's already not- have six already? Yeah, well, they're not out yet, but they've released, like, pictures. I think I sent you guys uh, the picture of it. Oh, the, the orange and white and gray ones and white ones? Yeah, they're not, those aren't the nicest colors, but, like, they have... I thought those were these, fire. Um, yeah, yeah they, they have some really sick colors. I'll, I'll send you... The last Metcons I've ever gotten were the threes. And I think those are the ones you bought me. The when black you, ones? Yeah. Yeah, the, the threes I wasn't... The threes I kind of like wasn't crazy, but the, I think the fours are some of the best ones. The twos and the fours. The fours, yeah. I like the twos. They were cool. Angels got the fours in all black, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah, think so. they're like all black. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think I think Francine or Mel had like fifty-five pairs. Francine or Mel had like some of the sicker shoes. They have all of them. Yeah, they did. I mean, yeah. I remember. Yeah, I remember they come in. I was like, "Who got it done?" I was like, "Oh, it's a birthday present for my son." I was like, "Damn, this son of good taste." Or like whatever well, it was. sixes. They look like geometry. So some of them, here's the thing though. It's like the Metcon 5. The Met, when, they, when they came out with the sample of the Metcon 5s, they showed two of the worst possible color combinations and they made them look like shit. Mm. So if you see the right color combination, it's fine. Like when the 5s came out, I'm not the out, biggest like fan black... of that triangle. At the, uh, it's, I think it's too much. Oh, at the side? Yeah. I see what you're saying. So, Jacques loved that triangle have, but, though. But if you have, but it, listen, if, you're, if your soul is gum colored and you have like a black or a navy with it, that's fine, but if you have like, a, like a rose gold heel, and like, depending on what they look like, you, again, it's all about color combinations. I think. Yeah, I was just looking at them right now. They don't look that bad. I mean, but yeah, I, like I can this. see what David's talking about with that block. Yeah, that's see, weird. I love that the wedge. That block uh, is horrible. Yeah, that way just separates in the middle. That's a, that's that. a lot. But if you have both of those sides of that the same color, then it doesn't look any different, you know? I just look at why did you delete like half the shoe? You know what I'm saying? Like why did you Yeah like just toss whereas, a yoga block in there? Whereas these I mean it's a lot smaller. Yeah, it's smaller. I'd rather the four, that. right? These are the fours, yeah. See, that's, that's what I'm saying. I the fours I think should have a nicer a nicer uh, a nicer design. Well I got another pair of fours last Friday. Did I tell you about my my shoe haul last week, guys? It was all over your fucking Instagram. I didn't see it. Three pairs for like a hundred. No, I got a tank and three pairs of shoes for like one hundred thirty-five dollars. Cool, man. Fucking steal. That was better than going to the fucking beach. I tell you. I was like, oh, sorry, I didn't go to the beach. I was like, I don't fuck on the beach. Take me to an outlet store. You know, one day when we we'll just rent a car and we'll go somewhere and we'll just fucking raid. The I got zip car. We out. Let's do it. Zip I'm too. down. I'm down. Alex tells me to, to to sell shoes, but I don't care. I'll keep buying more. And fuck. Uh, smelling salts. Those are fire. Oh my god, fucking low smelling salts. <laughs> but this is the thing. When it comes, it de- depends on what you're doing. If you're gonna go power right. lift and you're trying to rip that shit off the floor, power, <laughs> s- smelling salts are the shit. But in terms of, I think, o lifting. You need to be a little more concentrated and relaxed. I think getting you hyped up too much will, will be a little detrimental. But that's that's my take. I think for powerlifting, it's great. It's not like I have I a smelling I, salts thing next to my bed, and when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, and then start going. So my uh, one of my clients used to uh, work out. I think I want to say DeFranco's gym. He's a guy. He's in Jersey, right? DeFranco. Sounds like. And he. 
I think so. And I think this guy had trained like a number of guys in the NFL combine. And my client's like, yeah, man, I was in Jersey. He grew up in Jersey. And he's like, yeah, man, I go, I go to the Franco's gym. And there's always a smiling start. We used to do that shit all the time. But he was, it was so, he's just told me so many funny stories. And like, and that guy's most like, uh, celebrated client is probably this guy, Brian Cushing, who made it to the NFL as a linebacker with the Texans. Mm-hmm. So had like a facility down there and stuff. So like this guy had a, a pretty solid setup and gym and stuff. But like, I only think closest to the smelling salts I have. Remember I told you about the chemistry uh, experiences I had? Okay. Yeah. All that shit was a like smelling salt. If you want to smell it, that, that shit like clean up everything. Yeah, they say it's, it's um, it. it's supposed to be like um, ammonia. Um, it's but ammonium it's, salts, yeah, ammonium, ammonium salts, yeah. yeah. But right now, the they say that a lot of the advertising, a lot of sold smelling salts are like ammonia scented, right? So it's not actual ammonia, just because oh, that's very better. Ammonia really better. is corrosive, and I'm just looking mm-hmm. it up here. It says severity of health of effects uh, depends on the route of exposure, the dose and the duration of exposure, exposure to high concentrations of ammonia in the air causes immediate burning of eyes, nose, throat, and respiratory tract can result in blindness, lung damage, or death. Fuck. Um, and that's health. Can you imagine you PR or, or you PR be a fucking dead after or you're blind. You're blind. Oh, yeah. it was worth it. I love to the And then you hear a guy in the background, no rep. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. That'd be David. That'd be David. <laughs> right. no I'd be like, no um, rep, but he's dead. No rep. No. <laughs> I said what I said. Dead ass. Dead ass. Um, right. But yeah, uh, Kelly had bought some in after they went to, where they go? They went to the Arnold. Um, and that stuff smells like, if I could like paint a picture for those of you who haven't smelled it, um, it smells like that sensation or the smell that you feel when somebody just punches you in the nose. Like, that's what it feels like. It feels like everything opens up, but then it's also, like, nasally and kind of, like, smell smell like pennies or something like that. Yeah. It smells Penny like smell that. It's, it, it just All shoots up so fast. All at once. It just All goes, yeah. Um, it's really yeah, offensive. Yeah, it has got a, met, a metally kind of smell about it. Yeah, definitely. There was this brand that was selling smelling salts with uh, different flavors or, like, different uh, scents. Sorry. That's the same guy who makes like uh he was making one coffee and stuff like that. Oh god. He was making a coffee smelling smelling salt. So is this the same guy that did the, the vaping pre workout? Did you hear about this? No. No, but I wanna go ahead, wait, wait on that one. Because okay. supposedly caffeine has so many health benefits and has like a ton of health benefits. And you don't even have to like drink coffee in order to like have the effects of caffeine so apparently like if you even smell like a cup of coffee then it allows your like your body has like certain benefits that happen just from the smell of it in and of yeah. itself but go ahead Jacques what were you what were you about to say so I've got a, excuse me, I've got a friend that I'm training and uh, he's a bit of a comedian anyway and a um comedian I can't tell if David's just being funny or if... no no I honestly don't know what He's a bit of a comedian. A it comedian, okay. Stupid, I thought you said he's a medium. I'm like, he fucking talk to ghosts? No, nah, no, nah, he might as well do. But Remember anyway, he was like, he sent, he sent me this, uh, this thing. He's like, oh, look at this. He goes, I think it's legit. And I, couldn't, I can never tell if he's being serious. I think mm. he, he does a lot of stupid stuff. So anyway, he's like, look, I'm thinking of doing this. And I was like, no, don't do it. Just if you want pre-workout, have fruit. He's like, yeah, but look, this is, this is not. Because like some people with pre-workout, I guess they're like the digestive side of uh, things is an issue for them, right? And he's like, oh, this, you just inhale it. And then he came clean after. He's like, no, I was just joking. He's like, isn't this the dumbest shit you ever saw? And uh, I was just telling him, I was like, I said, just sleep, eat correctly, hydrate. I, I actually love having fruit now. It's my like, oh, fruit now. Like, I having I changed it from bananas, like strawberries, like a handful of strawberries for my pre-workout. Mm. So it's the way to go. And I don't think there's... But uh, yeah, a pre a pre workout vape exists. I'll find the link. Maybe you know, I saw thing. there's another trend coming out about cannabis infused yoga classes, and that all that comes like to a, mind is oh, sounds you know, like a nap. Sounds like a nap. But then I start thinking about the people in jail for having a joint, and they oh, have yoga man. classes now. See that's see. I spoke to people as well about like if the government sorry, it got political. My bad. 
No, you no, no, no. The government wants to make cannabis legal in more con- in more states, but then you face an issue of anyone who's, like you said, locked up for mm-hmm. possession, right? So that's an issue. Anyway, yeah. off topic. Sorry, um, it's a little off topic, but I felt it. That shit hit. Shit burnt. That shit hit. Uh, compression shorts, and then we'll wrap it up. I have. I everybody have, believes uh, in chalk. I have right? wrestling singlets. What? Oh yeah! Oh, Remember that picture that we that we had the old trainer feed picture? Shout out to the trainer feed uh, website. Check it out, guys, if you haven't seen it. What old picture? The picture of all three of us. Remember? Oh and it yeah. Was like I was doing something. Jacques was on a roof, and you were in the a onesie. I was in the onesie. In the mankini. You were in a onesie. You like a Teletubby. It's a mankini. Black Teletubby. Right? Was it my blue singlet or my black one? I don't remember. Doesn't no, matter. Still a mankini. Does someone else know what a mankini is? <laughs> it's a leotard. Um, no. I think I saw. Wasn't that a mankini on um? What was the guy? Borat. Borat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's what David. Was Basically doing. a thong. Basically, it goes around your shoulders, right? It's a wrestling a thong singlet. that goes all the way. Everyone over. knows how it looks like. So maybe we should do a memes page, and we'll just do like memes based in the podcast. And the next one can just be David and Mankini. If anyone can Photoshop his head on that. I'm down for the David and Mankini, but I don't know about the 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 long term strategy page. for the memes page. <laughs> 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 We'd have to sit down and talk about that one. But definitely we should have David and a Mankini. We gotta get that people up with there. compression shorts just wanna mimic doing shit naked with no restrictions. And for that I say, why don't you just wear stretchy shorts? You know? Like what do you mean stretchy shorts? Like, like Lululemon has great stretchy shorts. Not not shorts. Oh, that are I see what you're saying. Like the shorts that you you typically wear for training, right? Exactly. Like when you train your clients. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Um, like four way stretch, not exactly. like compression. No, like yeah. got you. Uh, well, but you know, some. What about like, so compression and the argument that it's going to like increase blood flow and uh, warm up tissues and, you know, joints. And Um, I don't don't know the research on that, but (laughs) I could see how it could be like nice, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I I think I, I kind of feel you on that one. Like it's a fine line between that and just like boxers, uh, boxer briefs at that point. Right. Or compression boxer briefs at yeah. that point um it's like the the compression sleeves that nba players wear uh alan iverson like, uh, yeah Kobe, that's just for yeah. that's just for comfort right really, but that's, that, that's, that's different awesome. than the than the shorts though isn't right, it right right how i mean they're both compression so why that's... why would nba why do nba players wear I, i'm just not aware People, why so I not agree either that. it was either think... fashion because AI wore them, like he was a big fashion guy back in the day. Right. And it was right. Like, you know? But then you have other people that wear it because they say it it, it keeps your shooting arm warm. You know, or, or, or shit like that. I, I don't know. Okay. I didn't I think, know that. Yeah, and that's also, that's also tricky because when it comes to sports, like there's a lot of um, uh, like rituals that players get into and then they don't want to break the ritual and then they're like, yeah, because right. it's this. Yeah. Right? So... Um, you know, headbands are the same deal, right? Like, or sweatbands, I should say. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's, like, in terms of, like, I don't know too much, like you said, David, as well, saying about the research behind it. Like, I'm sure there's some studies that can show there is benefits in wearing it. I personally will just wear it out of comfort. Like, I got to wear something out of comfort. Like, I don't know, like, um... And he- I wear a headband just out of comfort as well, like out of preference. It just like there's no I don't read it for science. I don't have anything of those for scientific reasons. It's just preference. I mean, you can make the argument that wearing a compression sleeve or compression pants, right? Like we had we had a couple coworkers that would wear those tight pants. Um, people would say like yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, they would. Let's say, for example, with the shooting sleeve, when your arm is flexed, you know, the, your, 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 the sleeve itself is getting it gets stretched. tight, right? And then when you release, you know, you get like a, a snap. A snap. So, a little spring. Yeah, some people may say that. 
I don't know. I I mean the only yeah. time. <laughs> time I, so I will vouch for that. Uh, I will vouch for it in the sense that I you know I'm on the leaner side, and when it gets a little bit cold, it's better to have some sort of compression you than not yeah. because like especially when you're riding like city bike or something like that, and I'm trying to you know obviously you wear pants or whatever because it's cold and the when the wind hits you it's better to have compression than not have compression because i agree i I mean i would die i would just die on the spot frostbite (laughs) my kneecaps done i'm good i got my insulation i'm good Uh, i need i need that compression so i I guess (laughs) pause so (laughs) i guess i guess that kind of like sums that part up but shall we wrap it up yeah yeah, let's wrap it up. We're hoping to get a guest on next week, right? Yeah. yeah. Fingers crossed. We have yeah, we got this. for our listeners, we have we have been uh we have been asking of again people. It's just unfortunately not worked out as uh as we had hoped of timing, but we're definitely gonna be bringing more guests on. So that's that's hopefully by next week get someone else back on. Yeah. Definitely. So thanks guys for listening. Uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Also, uh, I said this earlier, but um, I forgot to say on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, make sure to like leave a review, drop a review. You know, leave Follow. how many, leave as many stars as you would care to give. I suggest five. Five. But um, yeah, five. Right. <laughs> yeah, just five. Fuck it. Um, leave five stars, and that helps us out as well. So thanks everybody for listening. Um, and we'll catch you next time. Bye, guys. Juices.